Hey everybody and welcome back to Dice Studio. In this video I'm going to work on another render. Um, now this one I'm going to try and talk you through in a little bit more depth what I'm doing. And um, Essentially what I'm doing is I've got this scene here, I can just stick this in into the IRA mode. It's going to have a little bit of a thing for a moment. And then you will see, hopefully, that we have a daytime scene in this hallway. And what I want to do is I actually want to change my composition ever slightly and turn this into a nighttime scene so that I've got a separate copy of this scene specifically oh, that was foolish specifically for nighttime. And that's so that I can do obviously do scenes at nighttime as well. So first thing I have to do is just come out of that camera because I don't want to move that around because that's actually a pretty good view. But for the purposes of the nighttime scene, I'm actually going to drop the camera down and shoot from a slightly lower angle. And I'm probably going to shoot it from kind of around about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, that's the wrong button, I'm going to create a camera where I currently am, just there. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, so the first part of turning it into a nighttime scene, obviously, is that we've got to get rid of the outdoor stuff. Now, there's different ways that you can do this. Um, for the sake of consistency, the first method that I'm going to try is I'm just going to try turning down the intensity of the HDRI to sufficient a level that it's actually no longer casting too much light in the room. But if you were to cast a, a critical eye over it, you'd still be able to see the trees and such outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the environment intensity and see what happens there. As you can see, it's closer to the evening now, but we do still have that shadow there. So now if I drop down the environment map intensity as well, that should certainly reduce that significantly. Now we do have a plane in the scene currently creating light, which is obviously not what we want. So we just have to take our sphere there, turn off visibility of it, and there you go, we've lost light. Now you can see that it does look a little bit different. There is a very subtle shadow there. So what I'm going to do is in my environment tint setting in my render settings, I'm going to change that and I'm going to try dropping that to a kind of a bluish color and just see if that does anything. Hopefully that will give us a little bit closer to what we're after. It's close, but it's probably a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to bring that down to kind of here and see what happens there. And that's much better. Still maybe a little bit too saturated, so I'm going to come down again just a smidge. And that will give us... That's much better. Now it looks like it's nighttime outside. There is still that light there, but it's no longer it's no longer really that jarring it looks much better now than it did before so in this scene what i want is for light to be coming out from behind this door now this is probably going to be quite a snug fit so i have to figure out a way of simulating that without it looking ridiculous so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to texture shaded mode for a minute i've got my camera saved where it is so it doesn't matter too much if i move it's, it's there it's fine as you can see, this is, this, this is a room I've constructed myself and just added props to it. So it's a completely custom room. Uh, so we can actually have a really close look at this and see if there's anything we can do. And the, yeah, there is something we can do. We can try selecting... If I turn back on the selection of that, I can try selecting the door, the actual door itself, and I can try messing around with it in the geometry editor and maybe just shift it up ever so slightly and just see what happens. Let's just see what happens if I try and drag that up. I think we can give ourselves a gap behind the door. And we don't want it to be a massive gap, we just want it to be big enough that it creates this space in there which is great. So now what I want to do is, the problem is, is that if I pump a huge light source right outside this door, there is a chance that it's going to illuminate something or, or shine through a crack that I don't want it to. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a very, very tiny plane 
under here. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to let the uh, software have a bit of a think. There we go. Create a plane. One meter across is fine for now. Let's find our plane and we can move it into position making sure that we're selecting the plane and not some other random object in the scene. We could turn off the selection for the rest of the scene to be honest. We don't need to do that anymore so let's just shift click turn that off. Cool right so that's there and we want to move it under this door frame. And swing our camera around just there. Let's walk back to this again. And now what we want to do is we're going to raise it up so it sits into that gap and we're going to just change some of the dimensions now. So the first thing I want to do is dramatically drop down the X scale. It really just needs to be a little sliver like that. We're also going to shrink it along the Z scale. I'm just going to try and line that up so that it sits there and then we can drop down that Z scale a little bit more. Try and line it up again. Cool beans. Now I'm going to flip it 90 degrees on the Z axis. There we go. And now I can back that into that gap. And I can line myself up a little bit better so that I can make sure that I completely fill that gap with this. And then slide it back so that it actually sits in the gap and not weirdly like that okay so there we go now what i want to do is i'm going to go into my surfaces tab and i'm going to have to crank up a emission intensity quite significantly here turn that into a white color i might even go for a slightly yellow color so let's go with this for now maybe come a little bit more of it into the orange and then we're going to change this to kcdmr2 and then jump back to our camera and stick it back into NVIDIA IRO mode and just see what happens. It might be bright enough, it might be too bright. This is where we tweak it. Just see what happens. It's got to have a bit of a think. Okay, so as we can see, if I were to deselect the object, it looks okay, but it's a little bit, you can see the object itself a bit too much. So what we can do, select it again. I'm just going to nudge it back that way a little bit more there we go that's more that looks a little bit better it's not quite so intense now and if we really wanted to we could select that door and just bring it down a, a touch more but essentially this is what i'm after for this render we've now got a decent looking night scene we've got moonlight coming in through the window it's not so intense but the trees still match the daytime hdri which is really what i was worried about and then you've got a light coming out from behind that door and it's not we've not moved that door so far that someone would really be able to really pick and look at that in any way that makes them think oh well that door's been moved or whatever so we've created that gap and if not we can always come back to our door which is there and we can go to parameters and we can look at our Y scale and we can bring it back down a little bit if we want to. I mean you can't go too far because you'll end up losing your light source altogether but if you're so inclined that's what you can do. Now something else that you could do in your render settings to add a little bit more of an eerie effect to that is if we go into our filtering settings you can actually turn on the bloom filter. It's going to take a moment for that to happen. If I stick bloom on and then give it a moment you can see that it creates that glow around that light source. If I just deselect the object again, go back into my scene tab, turn that off and then click away from it. And then we can adjust the bloom settings so we can bring down or up the bloom threshold. Let's just try sticking that on 4000 and see what happens. So we're doubling it. Perhaps that's not enough. Let's try uh, 8000. There we go. And you can see the bloom is reducing every time I adjust that. And we don't want it to be massive. We just want it to be, I'm going to try 20,000. See what happens. It's starting to look a little bit more sensible. Let's try 35,000. See what happens there. Okay, that's much more normal looking. That's more what we're after. And as you can see now, it actually starts starting to look really much more like what we're after. 
So that's the scene itself set. Now what I want to do at the moment is I want to save that as a scene preset so that it's not going to overwrite my daytime version of this render. So that's what I'm going to do in just a sec. And then I will look at maybe sticking a character in the scene and seeing how that lights up. So here I am, I have loaded a character into the scene. I've just used a random character because you're not going to actually, in the game I'm working on, this character's not actually going to be there. But I've put him in a random pose in some black kind of clothes and I'm just going to stick this now into NVIDIA IRO mode and just see if uh, how it looks really. I kind of want it to be in silhouette so it'll be interesting to see whether or not that happens or not. I can always use canvases to achieve the effect that I'm after if I so chose. So yeah, pretty much what I was after. You've got a really cool looking silhouette there. It looks spooky. I mean, that character could be anyone. You, don't, you can't really see the shape or anything like that. So yeah, realistically, if this is a kind of uh, horror scene or something like that, this would be precisely what I'm after. So I would call that a success and it's been fairly easy to achieve as well. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next episode. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.